we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you an exercise sheet that's probably the most important thing. If someone asks me what's the most, what, if you could only give me one piece of paper that I have to learn, this would be the paper. It's an exercise sheet that is really, really imperative as a musician that you know. Okay? Then I'm going to, we're going to talk about playing by Braille. How many of you, if you closed your eyes, could find a note that I told you on the keyboard? If I said, close your eyes and find a C, could you do it? Yeah. You could. I, you, you don't think you can, but you can. Now, I've, I've been watching everybody play. And, uh, Chicken Club was last week, and I watched you all play. And by the way, you did an amazing job, all of you. And then when we give extra help, the, the first thing I tell most people that I work with is you have this bobblehead effect, right? I think I've said it to all of you, where you look at the music, you look down at your hand, you look back at the music, you look down at your hand, and you're lost. So we got to, we really got to nip that um, because you will never play faster or play with more confidence if you have to keep doing that. Uh, it'll just really tie you down. So those are two things that really need to be addressed right away. Okay? So and every week you're going to get an assignment. Now, because this is boot camp, I'm not going to give you a ton of things to do. We're going to do just little things that are going to add up in six weeks to a big thing. Okay? So when I get, what I tell you to do today, I really need you to do it. Because next week's lesson is predicated, is that right, predicated, on what we do this week, all right? This is a series. Now, if you miss one, our, our videographer here is putting them up on YouTube. So you can, if you miss a lesson because of vacation or whatever, you can, you can make up for it uh, by watching it on the, on the computer, okay? All right, so first thing first. We, we need to uh, talk about the keyboard. Finding how, how do blind people play the piano? How do they know? Sound and touch. Sound and touch. It's all touch. And the keyboard has a very, very distinctive look. It has two black keys, three black keys, two black keys, three black keys. So finding your way around the keyboard requires you to just do this and figure out where you are. So if I, if I say to you, close your eyes and find a C, then you just go, okay, I, I need to find a group of two. two black keys. And C is the anchor for those two black keys, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. If I find three black keys, what note is this? F. F is the anchor for the three black keys. All right. When we go to the keyboards in a minute and I have you close your eyes, that's what you're going to do. You're going to feel around and first you're going to find a set of three black keys and then two and then three and then two. And it's, it's all uniform. Okay? So anytime you find two black keys, there's C. The three notes that are connected to those those two black keys are C, D, and E. All right? The three black keys, the notes that are connected, and we're all going to use white notes for now, are F, G, A, and B. All right? So when we have our little test, you're going to go, okay, two black keys, there's a D right in the middle of it. There's an E. Okay, three black keys, there's F, there's A, there's G, there's B, there's C. Now, when you get home, that's what you'll do. You'll just find a key and try to name it. So if, if you close your eyes and you go, all right, just pick a key. Whoops, I almost fell over. There's a note. I have to figure out how many black keys are around it, right? There's three, all right? So if I leave my finger there and there's three, there's F, G, that must be an A. See? Can you do that, anything? All right, everybody on a keyboard, let's find out. Assignment number one was to sit at your keyboard 
with your eyes closed and try to either find the notes or name the notes. You can say a letter and then try to find it and then push the note and try to name it. All right? It is imperative this week that you do that. So next week when you come and we sit down, I just say find an F and you can put your hand right there. And you all did very well today with that, by the way. Both Excellent. Hands. Huh? Both hands. Both hands. In fact, you could even just go find two Fs and just put in, put your, your fingers on two Fs with both hands. All right? Thanks, Mary. That wasn't going to be the same. <laughs> now you did it. I asked the wrong question. <laughs> Number two. Oh, well. <laughs> Read Greg's sheet. I want you to find those features on your instrument. All right? He, he wrote them out. He explained them. Now you find them. And they are called what is highlighted in black. So if you can't find them, gee, get out the manual, look in the table of contents under synchro, and it will show you where it is on your instrument. Okay? It'll also tell you where all the other features are. If you can't find them, call us. Do not let this week go by if you can't find one of those features. Okay? They are on every portable keyboard that has rhythms, <coughs> clavinova, and organ. Okay? So I would like you to find them and recognize them. All right? Each week we're going to give you a sheet that has things for you to look for. And we're going to start using them. <coughs> All right. Now, number three is the paper that I just gave you. It's called The Most Important Exercise Ever. And I think what we'll do, maybe, can we make this a PDF file for people who aren't here? Sure. And we put it on our website? Hey, all, the, all the person has to do is to send, send me a message. So I get their, uh, uh, in the message would be uh, their <coughs> email address. So they can send you the message via YouTube? Yeah, right, yeah. Right, so you can just I go to comment or? I'm sorry? You go to comment on YouTube? No, I think there's a, a place on YouTube where you can send a send message. Send a message. Yeah. And then just right. send a message to Richard and he'll send you the PDF file if you're not here today. Uh, or you can just call us and if you're watching this and you're in our class and we'll, we'll mail it to you. Okay? Or you can come by and pick it up. Pick it up, sure. All right. This, if someone says to me, if you only give me one paper, what would you give me? This would be the one I give you. It's in my chord book that I have written, and a lot of you have that book. I don't know if you've read it all the way through yet. But this book, this paper right here, if you can do these, you will find you can play just about anything by ear or by rote. All right? All it is, there is it's actually called a five-finger exercise with chords. Now, most teachers teach this. The chords are in the root position. I don't think you should do them in the root position because as keyboard players and organists and clavinova players, you can't play the chords in the root position. You can if you're a piano player, but what happens when you're stuck in one position with a chord? <coughs> you have to look up and down. There is no way you can change chords without looking down. It's impossible. If you learn all the chords in this <coughs> octave of X right here, Here's middle C, and on a keyboard, you're, let's say this is a portable keyboard. That's a 61 note keyboard, and that's generally what keyboards are. Here's middle C. Right here, F sharp, below middle C is the key split, always on a keyboard. If you put on the accompaniment button with your rhythm, the, the keyboard will split automatically here. You won't hear, if you have a piano sound on, the piano sound will stop right there. All Do right? Do you know what split, what, what she's talking about? Left yeah. hand. That's so. Uh, right hand. Okay, a split means I'm going to play the melody from here up, and I'm going to play the chords from here down. That's called splitting the keyboard. On an organ, you don't have to. You have the bottom keyboard is the chords, and the top keyboard is the melody. 
Okay, you can split the bottom keyboard if you want to. But what happens is you play along and you're playing piano. Da, 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 da. If the accompaniment button is on, which means you're going to play a left hand. Right there is where, uh, now he's got his split really low, but on a keyboard it'll split right there. And from here down, you're going to play the chords. All right? Now, I can't play, I can play C chord and F chord and G chord and B flat, and I can jump all over down here. But it's easier if you turn the chords over and you learn them right in this octave of Fs, right there. And that's where your hand should always be. On the organ, your hand should be at middle C, right here. And your chord should be played in that octave, right there. You, don't, you could play this organ and never use those keys or these keys. They don't even need to be there, technically. Okay? On a keyboard, you can only, you, if you only have these 12 keys, 13 actually, because I'm using two Fs, that's all you would ever need. You could play every <coughs> chord there is. I am ordering you <laughs> to learn the chords and the inversions that are on that paper. And most of you already know them. Okay? Now, here's the C chord. It's G, C, E. The, the way I remember it is pointer on C, up two, down three. A little poem. Pointer on C, point your finger on C, up two, down three. You learn chords in sets of twos or threes. Today we're doing twos. Turn the paper over. On the back, there are five sets of chords. Five of them. You need to learn them. If it takes you one set a week, in five weeks you will know every chord you'll ever need. And during this boot camp, you're going to know how to play every single chord by the time we're done. Because you did your homework this week. Got it? Got it. Okay. Am I clear? Yeah. Okay. I can't monitor your practicing, but if you tell me next week you don't get it, it's because you didn't practice this week. And I'm going to be, I'm the sergeant of the boot camp. <laughs> I, just I, I learned with them in the, the spelling position and started having problems and I'm having you now having to relearn them all. I know. It's not easy to relearn them. If, you know what? It's okay though. Because if you can spell them in the root position. Yeah, but then I have to go and say, okay. Slip them over. It means. Yeah. Now there's been a lot of methods out. Um, when I started teaching the pointer system, I've got some old pointer system books. That was the most popular. Pointer on the chord, up two, down three. Pointer on the chord, up two, down three. Pointer on the chord, up two, down. You're still jumping all over the place. All right? So a C chord, that's it. I don't care if you can spell it. I don't care if you, I don't care about anything except you know how to play it next week. It's G, C, E. It has two buddies, an F chord, and a G chord. And those are both popular chords. You can play almost everything with those three chords. To get to an F chord, we have what's called a common note. You hold the middle note down, you raise the bottom one and the top one. I can do that without looking. See? An F chord is just a flipped over C chord. Pointer on C, up three, down two. See? So I'm just going to practice all week. This to this, C to F. See, and say it while you play it. C, I, I, I made a poem. Say it while you play it. C to F, C to F. Next set, C to G. C, hold the bottom note. C to G, C to G, C to G. So All right. the top two notes are just coming down. One. Right, you just drop the top two. See, I can do that without looking. That way you're not jumping all over. The right, paper. I'm not moving anywhere. All right, the next set is G to D. All right, now I hold the top note, look. It's G, and there's a black note in there, to D. I'm just lowering the bottom two notes, one. G, I don't care what figures you use. G to D, G to D. It's repetition, you just have 
to keep doing it over and over. Then, look, here's a D chord. E chord feels just like D chord. You lock your hand and you move it up one. E D chord feels like that. E chord feels like that. And A is right there. E to A. E to A. And the last one is F. I didn't do a B chord because you're never going to play it. I made it a B flat chord. F to B flat. F to B flat. See how all the top note down? So I can play every single chord right there in that octave, and I never have to look. That's why I decided for boot camp, we're going to do play by braille. You're going to be able to play the melody notes in a couple of weeks without ever looking down, and you're also going to be able to play the chords without ever looking down. Yes? But so are chords simply instances in which you play several notes at once? Yes, three yeah. notes at a time with your left hand, okay? Stick around after class, and I'm just going to give you a little orientation, okay? All right, here's how you're going to practice this. Your right hand's going to play the first five notes of the scale that the chord comes from. That's all. All right, so let's start with C. And what Greg just told you is what you're going to do, because this is dang boring. It is really boring. If I just sit here and go, Now, it's going to be 
what's what's our new young man's name? Scott. Scott. It's Scott. Scott. Ooh, nice name. I like that. You are going to be our guinea pig. Because uh -oh. Scott is new, right? He has no bad habits to unlearn. Wonderful. Right? Oh, he's yeah. starting, he's got a clean slate. So you guys have all this stuff up here. Yes. <laughs> right? You gotta get rid of it and do the homework. So I'm gonna be watching you. He probably won't be back next week. <laughs> he better be. He will. Okay. If you do what I tell you. You will really enjoy what you, when you're done with boot camp. It's not fun for a while, but we're trying to make it fun with rhythms. If you learn, that's why you bought these instruments. Somebody, him, <laughs> told you it was fun, right? And that it was easy. Well, it's not easy. It, it's easy, you can sit down and play a couple easy songs with two fingers. But if you really want to progress, you have to exercise, right? You can't lose weight if you don't stop eating and you don't exercise. You can't play the piano if you don't do some kind of repetition. It has to happen, okay? All right, so that's number three. Number four. Oh, I took the signal and it's right up there. Okay. Number four. On the back are those chords. Those five sets of chords. Trust me, if you do the, the number three, number four is easy. If you practice number three, and you, and, and you know, I really don't care what order you do them in. You might want to start with number four and then do number three because you get used to the chords first. I don't care, whichever way you, works for you. Number four, <coughs> I want you, if you're a beginner, your left hand is all you can do, okay? So number four is the five, practice five sets of chords. If you're a beginner, you just practice these with your left hand, okay? If you're not a beginner and you're moving up and you're want a little more challenge, I want you to practice these chords with both hands. Two C chords, two G chords. So, because, and here's why I say this. Most people over the years that I watch learn to play, they, they train their left hand to be the chord player, and they train their right hand to be the melody player. Then they get more advanced, and the le they want their left hand to play more, more than chords, and they want their right hand to be able to play more than one note. And they can't. They have to start all over and retrain everything. Okay? If you do number four with both hands while you're suffering and you're just learning, it'll be much easier later to, to add things to what you do. Okay? Got it? All right, so now I'm just gonna sit and I'm just gonna pick a rhythm and let's just do a little ballad.
play it and hold it, or you can just roll your right hand, or you can play one note at a time, and just, <coughs> just get creative. But while you're doing all this fun stuff, you're learning and doing the discipline and doing the boring exercises. Okay? That's all I'm giving you. That should not overwhelm you. I'm going to make one state listen really close. You might not be able to be really proficient at it in a week. Okay? I want you to do this at your pace. You do not have to know all of this perfectly by next week. All right? You might stumble with a B flat chord or an E to A might be a pain. It's okay. All right? Take it and say, okay, I'm today I'm just working on C's and G's. Number one, today. Go home today and say, oh my gosh, I can't do all of these. Don't do that. I have learned as I get older, especially like with my house or with projects I have, I can take a day off and I go, I gotta clean my whole house. I don't do that anymore. One room at a time. By the end of the year, no. <laughs> That's a big house. Let me start all over. It's, no, it's kind of like my desk. Ask Greg. If you look at Greg's desk, immaculate. His desk, I mean, he doesn't even have a dust speck on it. My desk, <laughs> that's another story. I clean it, and I go, I am never going to let it get like that again. How many days does it take? Oh, it's not even a day. <laughs> See? Well, I just accept me the way I am now. But with music, if you take all of that and you look and you go, oh, I have to do all that today when I get home? No. Pace yourself and say, okay, I have five sets of chords. I'm going to practice one set a day. I'm going to keep doing it over. I'm going to try all 200 rhythms in one day, maybe. Or just even separate your rhythm units. And just go, I'm just going to try four or five different rhythms. And I'm just going to practice C and G and C and G with both hands all day today. And then I'm going to go over to the other side of the paper, and I'm just going to do the C and the G. See? Learn the sets and learn the line at the same time. Okay? Then the next set is C to F. Do that tomorrow. C line and F line. Okay? Then do G to D. G line and D line. Okay? And then you will find by the end of the week you're going, hmm. I think I'm getting it. When you take a group class, it's really hard to know that you're getting it and that you're that you're moving forward. Okay, and a lot of you sent us comments this week. I got tons of emails of suggestions. Thank you, thank you. And because we don't know when you have a group what you need. So in boot camp, we have people who've been here for a little while. People have been here for a long while and new and newbies. Okay? So we have to make sure that we give you all a challenge. And now even if you've been playing for a while, you may not have approached things this way. Okay? So next week now, we're going I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you the song this week. Okay? I want you to do this. This is fun. It can be a song. Just playing with the rhythms and doing all the things. The song we're going to tackle for six weeks is five foot two. Mostly because every topic you need is in that song. Seventh chords, how to add a, add a note to a chord, how, to, uh, how chords progress, where they go, and it's all based on what we're doing today. All right? So next week we're going to talk about solo instruments because we're going to, and we're going to be playing five foot two by ear and by braille, and by note, all three. So I, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to listen to a song. You know what the biggest, the biggest complaint for people when I say you can play by ear? I don't know any songs in my head. I don't know any songs. And if I do know it, I only know a little bit of it. And then I get to the middle and I can't remember how it goes. So now that you're, we're learning to play by braille, you're going to start to learn about intervals. How far apart are the notes? Remember in the old days they taught do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do? 
uh, an interval of a second is do to re, do to me, do to put, what is a fourth and a fifth? Okay, that's the topic next week. And what's going to happen, and, and, and I think we'll probably put these DVDs out in a, a sequence. So we'll, this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to call it boot camp. Music boot camp. How to practice. And I think that's going to be our, our, our theme. How, how do you practice? Because there's a big difference between playing and practicing, isn't there? Mm. Playing is not exhausting. Practicing, you will feel it in about 50, well, as you get older, Sky won't feel it for about an hour. <laughs> okay, I feel it now in about 15 minutes. I start to go, oh, man, I got a kink in my back, or, you know, I just get tired. So, pace yourself, and here's your practice routine. 10 minutes a day, or 20 minutes a day, excuse me, 20 minutes a day for five days. My, all the kids that I teach have a 100 minute requirement. 100 minutes. Now, here's what I suggest as we get older, and for little kids too. 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon. If you sit at that keyboard for 10 minutes and do this, you will learn it, all right? Do not do anything else in the practice time. You can play music for hours, I don't care. But tell yourself, I've got to practice 20 minutes a day for five days, 100 minutes, all right? 